simple, easy to understand recipes that your whole family will enjoy. My recipes come from all of my ancestors. My great grandmother was an Indian, a Cherokee, and we learned to cook from her on a wood-fired cook stove that sat catty-cornered in the kitchen. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. Today is Salisbury steak, gravy, instant mashed potatoes kicked up a notch, and green beans. Well, to get it started, I made one pound of ground beef into a mixture of Lipton onion soup, one egg, one half cup of oatmeal, one half cup of milk, salt and pepper, and an onion. And I mixed all that up and let that step set for about five or 10 minutes. And then I caramelized an onion and put my quart of green beans in it and one cup of water, salt and pepper. Then I'm greasing my pan where I've let my mix sit for 10 minutes. And now I'm forming them into balls, kind of a little football shape. And you put those out onto a greased baking pan and you're gonna bake those in the oven for 25 minutes. And I like to drizzle a little bit of flour on top of mine after I get them all formed into a ball. Pat them down a little bit and then I drizzle the flour on top and what it does, it helps them to stick together better. It makes them caramelize on the outside and it makes the gravy a little bit thicker when it bakes together in a little bit. It gives the texture a little bit more crunch, if you will. And it makes them hold together better. Uh, I put three tablespoons of flour also in the mixture and that helps them to hold together too. An egg works well but not as good as the three tablespoons of flour. And if you're trying to go gluten-free, you can replace that with cream of wheat, raw cream of wheat. And that works quite nicely. I just take all the mixture, form it out, to, out into balls about the size of the palm of my hand. And then I put those out onto the grease sheet, just making sure that they're sticking together well and that they're formed into a little patty. And then I'm just going to take some flour, drizzle it over top, and flip them over a little bit. And then when I flip them over, that gives them a chance to brown and caramelize on both sides with the flour. It gives them a little crunch, and you don't have to dirty up another plate uh, in order to get the floured result. Uh, I use shortening on my pan. It's a little thicker, and when I flip them, it doesn't go away, or uh, I still have grease on my pan. This is a delicious recipe. It's a simple gravy that goes over it. It's not anything really complicated, but it would kind of remind you of the filling inside of a pot pie, kind of, if you will. Something that's uh, clear, almost, very tasty. And when you cook it together, after you put these in the oven and bake them for 25 minutes, then when you make the gravy and put them in a casserole dish and put that in the oven, then all of the flavors of the onion and everything else that's inside of this comes out in the gravy. It's a wonderful result. And then this is also a really good freezer meal. You can make these up ahead of time, put them in the bowl or the casserole bowl, and then put the gravy over top and then later take it out of the freezer, and then bake it. And if it's frozen, you just bake it twice as long. Now, I had this package of rolls in my freezer, and they had gotten uh, smashed somehow. And so the top of them was falling off. They looked awful. And I didn't want to lose them. There was about three of them that was smashed out of 12. So I just took the uh, little bit of one tablespoon of melted butter, two tablespoons of mayonnaise, a tablespoon of Olive Garden Italian dressing, and a tablespoon of my zesty Italian dressing, and I mixed already prepared, and I mixed that up and put that in the bowl. Then I mixed in garlic powder, about two tablespoons of garlic powder, Parmesan cheese, a quarter of a cup, 
and about a quarter of a cup of mozzarella cheese in the mixture. Now I'm going to take one heaping tablespoon of this mixture and put it over into the boiling water with my instant mashed potatoes here in a minute to give them a little kick and zest and bring the garlic and uh, parmesan and all of those flavors out of the dressing into the potatoes. Now it's going to be a mild flavor, so if you want yours to be stronger, you'll have to make more mix. This is only done to use one heaping tablespoon of this into the potatoes, and then the rest of this goes on top of those old looking, tired, smashed, delicious bread. I love the rolls. They're yeast rolls. They're fantastic, and they were not cheap. And so I'm just going to save them by putting over top of the ones that look so bad and are all smashed. And we normally would have thrown them in the trash. I'm just going to uh, sprinkle a little paprika in that and spread this over top of those rolls. And then I'll drizzle a little bit more mozzarella cheese on top. And I am to here to tell you it is fantastic. The Italian dressing, you can use more of the Italian dressing in your mix if you like the Italian you know, the taste, the vinegar, uh, the oil. You don't have to use very much butter. I only used one tablespoon. And you really don't have to use the butter because the oil in the dressing will make it brown in the oven. Now you just lay it on a baking pan and put it in the oven. Sprinkle your uh, stuff on top. Now I'm doing the instant potatoes. Just boiled some water and putting enough potatoes in there till they look like they're thick enough. A tablespoon of butter, some sour cream, salt and pepper, and one heaping tablespoon of the garlic parmesan mixture. I just use whatever type of dehydrated potatoes they have. It's the cheapest. It doesn't make any difference because by the time you put all this stuff in there and you can put a little bit of Philadelphia cream cheese and if you use the cream cheese, it really makes them good. Mmm, yummy. And nobody ever knows that I've got instant potatoes if I hide the box. Okay, here goes in my heaping tablespoon and that just turns them into garlic parmesan potatoes. I probably made potatoes for four. When I done this dinner last night, all I done was everything that I had left over. I put them into freezer containers and put them in the freezer. So now we have two dinners out of one. Doing Southern cooking isn't complicated. It's just salt, pepper, and butter almost in everything. I've been cutting back a lot on the butter. You'll notice I use a tablespoon in about everything that I use butter in. But I've omitted using the butter in certain things like the green beans. Uh, my mother always used a little bit of butter in them. But we don't need all that butter in our body. So I put a tablespoon into the uh, bread and a tablespoon into the potatoes. And that's all the butter that I used in this meal. Now, when you mix up these potatoes, mix them up just a shade thinner than you want them to be. Because as they sit there, they rehydrate more. And you may have to put a drop or two of milk in them before you serve. If they get too thick. Now, here's those uh, rolls. You can see there where they're smashed in the middle. Something in the freezer just smashed them and they were perfectly good. But you can see there as I'm rubbing the spoon over it, as I was doing that, the whole top of them was peeling off. So I just spread that mixture of the zesty Italian dressing mix, Olive Garden, Parmesan, garlic powder. And when I had it all spread over there, I went ahead and sprinkled the whole top of this with garlic powder pretty pretty well and then uh, sprinkled it with mozzarella cheese and Parmesan again and then you bake it in the oven open like this you don't cover it or wrap it or anything you want it to crust on the outside and get a little bit hard and then the inside your rolls are still perfect there's always a way to save something even if it looks like it's ruined especially out of the freezer we try not to waste anything around here.
Now I'm sprinkling just a little bit of mozzarella all over the top of this. If I had enough uh, garlic parmesan down the side, <laughs> I would have put cheese down the side too. It was delicious. Everywhere there's cheese on this bread, it crusts and gets hard like, you know, creates a, a garlic parmesan cheesy outer layer that's hard and yummy. And then the inside is soft and chewy. Now I'm taking the uh, Salisbury steak out of the oven after 25 minutes and flipping them over and getting ready to put them in my casserole pan. Now that flour that you see on the outside just helps them to get thicker in the gravy that I'm getting ready to make. Now it doesn't matter how you put these in a pan. We're going to stack them in and then just pour all the gravy over top. Because when they come out, they don't stick together. The gravy is thick and yummy. And the Salisbury steak, you can make as many as you have in your container. They don't have to lay out flat at all. <clears throat> now in my pan here, I have water and chicken bouillon four chicken bouillons and four cups of water and I brought that to a boil and now I'm adding in some cornstarch with onion powder in it one tablespoon of onion powder salt and pepper is all I used now there's already grease and stuff in the meat you don't add butter to this uh, you don't add any more flavoring just the beef bouillon and you want it to be semi-thick, kind of like the consistency of the inside of a chicken pot pie, if you will. I like my gravies uh, like this to be clear, so I use the cornstarch slurry. Uh, in four cups, I use three tablespoons of cornstarch in a fourth of a cup of water. And now it's coming to a boil, and when it comes to a full boil, then it's ready to put into the pan over the Salisbury steak. And we're going to bake these in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And when they come out, they will be yummy. The gravy will taste exactly like the inside does. Uh, the gravy is delicious over the mashed potatoes. And with the garlic parmesan bread and the green beans was a great accompaniment to this meal. At this point, I am just simmering and waiting for it to come to a full rolling boil because that's when it becomes the thickest. And then I can see if I need more cornstarch at this point, then I can add it now in a slurry and make it be thick enough for the whole gravy result in the end. You're gonna love this recipe. And it's also good with frozen peas and carrots too. Kind of reminds me of those old timey Salisbury steak and gravy TV dinners we used to get. And as another side dish, um, my husband made a coleslaw tonight. And it has a little bit of paprika, mayonnaise, and equal amounts of vinegar and sugar and salt and pepper. That's all. It's really simple to make a southern coleslaw. If it's a lot of cabbage, use two tablespoons of vinegar. If it's a cup or more, use, or a cup or so, use one teaspoon, of, one tablespoon of vinegar. Now, I'm pouring the gravy over top of the Salisbury steak. When it gets thick enough on your spoon that when you wipe it, it doesn't go away. That's thick enough. So then this will go in the oven and the flour off of those Salisbury steaks, uh, the seasonings that's inside of them will flavor the gravy and make an au jus. It's delicious. You're going to love this. And I separated it out after we finished our dinner last night put the other half into the freezer for a freezer meal. I'm dusting the top with a little bit of onion powder, salt and pepper. And it goes in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And then everything will thicken up and it'll kind of get a little bit of a crust on the top and the gravy and everything will be yummy and thick and delicious 